All right, hi guys, it's Nick here again. Um, we're back with the transport game. We're on episode seven now, I think, and uh, we've got a pretty good setup going on if we just play the scene we've got. Um, last episode, we finished up uh, a rough camera, so if I hold my right mouse button, we can actually uh, rotate the camera and look around the scene. Uh, if I use the scroll wheel, we can zoom in and out of our terrain. And uh, with the uh, WSAD keys or the arrow keys, you can uh, move the camera around, which is quite a nice setup for viewing the terrain we've got here. Uh, and today I, I thought we'd actually focus on this terrain, I'll just stop the play mode. Because um, in our game what I'd like to be able to do um, is modify the terrain like you can in the Unity editor. So you see if I take the raise tool you get this little selection and you can actually modify the terrain as we've seen before. And I'd like the player to be able to do that um, as part of the game. So what I'm going to do is create a new script. I'll go to create C sharp script and I'm going to call it uh, train manager. And I'm just going to double click it to open it up in Visual Studio. Uh, I'm just going to go reload all. Obviously something has gone slightly wrong there. Okay there you go, new script. Back into Unity. Um, so first of all let's talk about the terrain. To modify the terrain layout what we need to first do is think about the way the train height is actually stored uh, and the way that is is uh, across the terrain it has a certain resolution and uh, the level of detail it can show so if i zoom further out you may notice the train gets lower and lower detail to save on computing power and this is made up of loads of little points that measure the height of the train in certain locations so to modify that, what we need to do is access the height of a certain point and modify it and then save it back to the terrain. Uh, and later on we can implement, say, the, the brush settings that you have in the editor uh, like this. I'm just going to undo that actually because I like my terrain as it was. Okay, so to start with we're going to need some uh, global variables. Uh, first of all we need a terrain. Um, I'm just going to call this main terrain. We'll set that. Actually, I need to make that public so we can set that in the inspector. Later on, we'll be generating terrain from the script dynamically, so we won't need this variable, but for now, we'll leave it as it is. Then we need two integers, which is a uh, resolution x and resolution. Well, I'm going to call it Y. I think technically it's Z, but Y makes a bit more sense. And this is the resolution of the terrain height map. And um, we'll set that by looking at the terrain. And the last thing we need is an array. And this is an array of floats, so that's floating point numbers. Uh, and this is going to be the actual heights of the terrain. And to start with, we're going to have to initialize those variables. So resolution x is equal to main terrain and then we need to access the terrain data this is what stores all of the height maps the texture maps where all the trees are placed this is really well as it says on the on the tin it is all the data associated with the terrain and that object has quite a lot of uh, variables associated with it and the one we're looking for is height map and we want width for x and for resolution y. We essentially want the same thing, except in here we want height map, height. And that gets the size of the height map in the current terrain. And the last thing we need to get is the initial heights of the terrain at the start of the play. So if height is equal to main terrain, terrain data except this time we're going to want to use a, a function called get heights like this and this uh, actually takes three no four variables in the case we're going to use so the x base and the y base these are the first two these are offsets so if you think about the terrain as a giant square you may want to edit and modify certain heights in a certain area in this case we want to get all of it so the offset is going to be zero by zero and the width and height is the resolutions that we've just got in the code above. So resolution X and resolution Y. 
and this code should fill in that height variable to start with. Now, uh, we want to basically do two things when we're modifying terrain to start with. One is make it taller and one is make it shorter. So I'm just going to add two functions, so void raise terrain. Uh, and for now I'm just going to give this, say, a vector 3 of position. And this will be the position you want to raise the terrain at. And an int of the amount we want to raise it by. Uh, and I will add the lower terrain, but that is essentially going to be the same method, except uh, when you're modifying the height, you'll be subtracting rather than adding. So to start with, uh, in this method, we're going to convert the position of our world space. So if we look at the time manager, that's got a certain uh, transform position bring up the gizmo here and we need to convert that to something relative to the terrain so I'll just create a variable in terrain uh, position x and we need to do a bit of maths to uh, convert our point in real space to terrain space so we need to take the uh, position dot x and then we need to divide it by the size of the terrain. So if we get main terrain dot terrain data dot size, maybe we want size dot x, and then we want to multiply it by the resolution of the terrain. So we get which sort of sample we're actually looking at. So this is the position of the point on the terrain, and then this will convert it to a sample that we can use. So we multiply it by resolution. X. And the last thing is uh, we need this to be an integer, so I'm going to add a cast at the beginning to integer. Shouldn't get any errors. Okay, and then I'm going to do almost the exact same thing, but for the y variable. So terrain pos y is equal to position dot z, because remember in world space y is the up down position. If you look at the gizmo here, you can see y is up down, and then we're looking at x and z here. And we want the size dot z and the resolution dot y. Um, so that gets us the samples really that we're working with here. And now we want to get the uh, starting height of this. So if we get float her height, we'll just get the height of that position, which is just equal to heights at terrain pos x and terrain pos y. And then we want to modify that, so we can do something as simply as cur height plus equal, so that means is cur height is equal to cur height plus a certain amount. This is just the shortcut operator, plus equals and we're going to put a mount here. So now we've made our modification, but this is only local to the script. Cur height belongs to us. Um, it's a local variable. But we want to save this back to the terrain so it makes a modification in real time. So the last thing we need to do is uh, resave it into the heights variable. So we want to say heights at uh, train pos x, train pos y is equal to car height. And now we could just use um, main terrain. We could. I'll, I'll show you this uh, way first, but then we're going to make a uh, modification in a moment that will make it slightly more efficient. So main train dot train data, and then we want to set heights. Again, the offset is going to be 0, 0, and then this height is going to be our cached heights variable. And this will update the terrain. Uh, the last thing we need to know is um, we need to call this raised terrain. So uh, I'm just going to add a really simple thing. So in update, we'll do if input. Oops. 
the input dot get mouse button uh we'll do the left mouse button then we'll do we need to do a ray cast so this will convert the mouse into a 3d point so we need to get some data for that so we'll do ray cast hit uh, as a variable this will store the data of our ray cast and then we also need to get the position of the ray cast so we'll get a ray variable is equal to uh, camera dot main dot screen point to ray so this will convert some a position on the screen that is the mouse pointer into a position in the uh, real world so i just want to get input dot mouse position and then we want to run the raycast so do an if block if physics dot raycast and then we'll just put in the uh, basic thing so ray and then out hit and this means that it's going to output the data into the hit variable that's what this out keywords means so uh, if we hit something when we're doing this raycast then we're going to raise the terrain at that point we'll call raise terrain at hit dot point and the amount let's do just one for now okay so this is a very very simple terrain modification we're going to snazz this up a lot later to make it more usable but i'm going to give it a go um, to start with i'm going to go game object create empty to create a container object for the script i'm going to call it terrain manager i have a space there so it's consistent with the time manager script um, the only thing we need to do here is just set our main terrain so i'm going to drag our terrain that we created onto that variable so let's give this a go and see if we can actually get anything to work here so i should be able to click okay so you can see we've actually modified the terrain by a lot but it's in the wrong position like clicked over here but it's uh it's modified it over here and that seems to be a recurring problem <laughs> Okay, some of them seem to be correct, but not all of them. In fact, I think it's this uh, Z problem, uh, this Z. Okay, so I think the issue we have here is to do with the axes, and I was just having a quick look on the documents on the Unity, uh, on the Unity website, and if you look uh, in the Pytes documentation, it actually tells you that it's indexed as Y first and then X, so to fix that problem i think all we have to do is swap the variables uh, the x and y in our heights variable and it should be modifying where we click let's wait for that to compile this is a pretty messy terrain but we'll sort that in a minute um oh uh, yeah so now as you see it is correctly modifying the train where i click it Okay, so I think that's just about what we've got time for this time. Next time we're going to do some uh, modifications to the script to make it a bit more, uh, well, better looking to start with, um, and also more efficient. But anyway, uh, for now, thanks for watching. My name is Nick Pearson, and I'll see you in the next video.